It's levels to the game, ass to the throne. Amanda Nunez, the greatest of all time. What Amanda Nunez has done, it's truly amazing. She is unquestionably the best. And all I spit is fire, I want all the smoke. rise to challenge Amanda Nunes. There is a new Bantamweight contender. It's a Rene Aldana. She believes this is her time. Oh! This is everything I said before. The moment that you feel what you're fighting for. We could have another Mexican world champion. Nobody's going to think you just bounce for me. Amanda Nunes, the greatest woman fighter of all time. She is just next level. Double jump again, baby. So much anticipation for this fight. Charles Oliveira is the most technical guy in the game. Most submissions and finishes in UFC history. Charles Oliveira wants that belt back. Benil Karyush. I'm going to take him out and set myself up for that belt. The UFC has landed in Vancouver. This is a massive event. New Jersey. Thank you all for coming out. My name is John Anik. Welcome to UFC 288 Fight Week. And of course, this here press conference for UFC 289, Nunez versus Aldana. As many of you know, UFC 289 will be our next pay-per-view. It goes down Saturday, June 10th. Rogers Arena, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And that'll be our first live event in Canada since 2019. Needless to say, they're very happy to have the combat sports leader back in the great white north. Our main event will be for the UFC Women's Bantamweight Championship. And first to the stage today is the number five ranked UFC Bantamweight contender. Eight career wins by knockout. That includes her last three in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Please welcome your next world title challenger out of Mexico, Irene Aldana. All right, our next athlete is the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC Bantamweight champion. She's also got a UFC featherweight title at home, and she is ubiquitously regarded as the greatest women's mixed martial arts athlete of all time, the Lioness, Amanda Nunes. All right, folks, we've got 20 minutes or so right now with two of the best Bantamweights in the world. Who has the first question? I think maybe my man Oscar. Go ahead, sir. Question for Amanda Nunes. Amanda, obviously, an opponent changed for you. When did you hear Juliana was out of the fight and you'd instead be fighting Arena? Honestly, this is the original opponent right there, you know? Me, UFC, was back and forth, and we, we discussed about Adana, and something changed, and they come out with Juliana. So now we are here with the real opponent. I'm very happy about it, less heavy as well, you know? So, and I'm excited. Do you believe Irina should have been the one fighting you in Vancouver anyway, not just Juliana? Definitely. After what I did with Juliana in our last fight, it's no question, you know? So now she's here, I'm very happy for her, and now we're going to see each other soon. Do you believe this is the tougher fight because of her excellent boxing and her general ability? Honestly, at this point, like all those girls, it's very tough, you know? I just get my shit together, get ready, you know? And this is exactly what I do. Go to the gym and be motivated. I'm a lioness. I'm here to hunt. And so I'm ready for Vancouver. And I'm very excited with this opponent, you know? So Aldana is very, very, very tough. You know, she can, she have heavy hands. So she's technical. And that's, this is going to be so fun, you know? So I'm heavy. I have heavy hands as well. I'm well around. So you guys have to be excited for this. So. You mentioned her striking ability. You're obviously a fantastic striker as well. Does this have the potential to be a stand-up war? Honestly, like, five minute rounds, everything can happen, you know? I'm going to strike if, if, if I want. I'm going to wrestle her if I want. So this can go anywhere. So I feel like she's going to be ready for. This is going to be a very good back and forth. Can be a knockout. 
can be a finish, and if you want to go to five rounds, you're going to go anyways. So this is a championship fight. You guys can be ready. Anything can happen. Arida, for you, how excited were you to get the call and be told that you're fighting for the world title? Well, definitely very excited. Um, I'm fighting the greatest of all time. I, I respect Amanda a lot. I'm grateful for the opportunity. Thank you. And we're ready. I think she said it all. Yeah. What would be more important to you, winning the world title or beating the greatest of all time? I mean, having the opportunity is already big for me. And to be able to perform with and to share the octagon with Amanda, it's already the biggest accomplishment ever. Irina, just uh, right here. Um, obviously, you were supposed to fight originally May 20th. So what did you have to do with your training camp just to extend it a few more weeks and the weight cut and everything? What adjustments did you make to prepare for the later date? Uh, just the same. It's, we were happy, actually. We have more time, six more weeks, extra weeks uh, to, to keep sharing, to, to keep preparing. And it's, it's so good. I mean, not too much to change. Just adapt some things, some changes to the game plan, but everything is going good. The training camp was going great, so just keeping a little longer. And you're going to get asked this question a million times leading up to the fight, but obviously the fellow Mexican champions, there's been so much momentum and success for your teammates and your country. Um, what is that doing for your confidence going into this fight, and what would it mean for you to bring another belt to Mexico? Well, definitely that's a big motivation for me, having three Mexican champions here, having Alexa as my teammate, as a, a flyweight champion. This is a great time for Mexico, and I'm, I'm glad to have the opportunity to also represent Mexico here. And, uh, just back to you, Amanda. Of course, you have the two belts sitting in front of you. You're focused on this fight in 135, but what is the plan for 145? It's been a few years now since you fought in that division, so are you hoping to go up there again soon? Definitely. I take everything step by step, you know? So my next opponent, obviously, is right here next to me, so I got to be focusing on her and everything. So, but like, definitely, you know, I'm, I'm a double champion for a reason, baby. I'm going to keep defending these two belts as long as my body tell me to stop, you know? So, I feel healthy, I feel good, I feel happy. I go to the gym every day. I have my own gym. I do my own thing in my gym. So, I, like, it's nothing, nothing else to be grateful for everything. So, I can't wait to, like, step against Aldana. You know, this is a very good opportunity for, for both of us. And I'm happy for her too, you know, because she's been there, hanging out there for so long and then not having her opportunity to fight. And I feel like when they call me and then say her name, I say like, damn, thank God this girl got her shot, you know? Because after I did it to Juliana last fight, I feel like she's the one deserve it. And now she's here, I'm, I'm very glad. To see. Thank you, Amanda. Is it nice to have, you know, this level of respect and appreciation for your opponent? If Juliana was sitting here, I'm sure it would be a very different uh, type of dynamic and attitude. You know, obviously, Juliana is a very heavy opponent, person too. So, see Juliana for two times is like, kind of like, all right, now I'm going to have to shut up this girl for good. So, but things change. Now we are here. Now we're good. So, the only thing... I always like want to do is step in the, in the fight day, fight, and this is the girl that we're gonna do this. You now we're not gonna spend time here to to talk shit about about each other. That is not necessary. The only thing we have to do is put a good show for the fans, for you guys, you know, for the country. We both have, have respect our country, and this is what is gonna show from now on. Uh, Irina, right here in the middle. So obviously you have the fight, your next fight's against Amanda for the belt, but it did fall through at first. Juliana got that opportunity. How did you feel when, her, when you saw her, and she got the opportunity and you were not gonna be next to the belt? And what happened, like why did it fall through that you didn't get the fight first? I wasn't mad at all. I think Juliana deserves it too. And I was okay with that. And if I had to had another fight just to, to get to the title shot, I was okay with that. It doesn't bother me at all, but I'm glad I, the opportunity came. And then Amanda, this is your first opponent other than Juliana Pena since 2021. Are you excited to see someone fresh in the octagon? Definitely, you know, this is a new motivator, pushing me even, even better, you know, 
because uh, if it was Juliana, I have everything prepared for her already, you know? And, and now, Aldana, I, I have to stay, do everything different now, you know? Go back to the gym and then make a, a, a good plan, you know? We still have time for, so, and it's pretty much like sit down, make a good plan, and you're ready for the big day. Uh, this question is for Miss Aldana. Congratulations on getting the title shot, the title bid. Uh, chaos breeds opportunity, and this is your opportunity to become a world champion. What challenges do you feel that you bring to the champion that Jessica Pena wouldn't? I'm Mexican. <laughs> that's just the challenge. I'm Mexican, and that's it. That's it. Uh, uh, as Amanda said, we respect each other, and we're. If I wouldn't give her my best version, I would be disrespectful for her. And this is just uh, two fighters, two elite fighters, making their best for you guys. And Amanda Nunez, uh, uh, how hard is it to not overlook her, considering that you get past her, you get this win, and then Jessica Pena is obviously in your, uh, in your mirror? You know, Obviously, uh, after this one, whatever, you know, I feel like this one's supposed to be her, you know what I mean? So after this, any, anybody, Juliana, whatever, Rocky, whatever out there is going to be the next, but I feel like this one is going to be good for everybody, you know? Everybody involved in this, UFC, uh, we, and the fans, I feel like the countries, this is going to be good for everybody after this and whatever happened, I'm gonna be there to defend my belt. This is the, what I love, to, I love to do, you know? This is the, the pet that I like to feel. That's why I'm double champion. This feel is amazing. I never wanna let, let those belts go anywhere. Thank you. Hey champ, on that note, if you are victorious without overlooking your opponent, do you wanna defend the 145 pound belt next, or would you defend the 135 pound belt next? You know, whatever UFC you want to do, I feel like uh, we might have 145 opponents soon, and let's see how it's going to play out. You know, whatever happens, UFC decide is not, is not my, my final decision, but like, you're going to see I'm going to be there, you know what I mean? Who is going to step in front of me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be there. So, who, who, whatever, who else, I'm going to be to defend my belt. I've got a question right here for each of you. Amanda, uh, can you describe the differences in Juliana's and Irene's game from a skill perspective? Honestly, Juliana is that kind of fighter that she don't care about anything. She's crazy. She walk through, she do these crazy punches and then try to, you know what I mean, to, to bully you and all those things. So I learned a lot from that, you know, and I take her in the, in the, in the second fight. So obviously it was a bad day in our first fight. I, I could take her in that fight too, but like I definitely know where she's ready 100% for that moment. So, but like I learn it, I make adjustment, I make a full training camp, and I came back, getting my belt back, and now I'm here. So this is, this is how I do things, you know? I never give up in my life. If I did some mistakes, I'm gonna learn it from, I still gonna go back in and then move on. So, and getting my belt back was one of the, the best feelings that I, that I ever felt. And also again for you, Amanda, what makes Irene a challenging matchup? You know, actually, uh, uh, Aldana, she's like uh, powerful, you know, she, she can knock somebody out. So I got to watch for that. She also a very good counter fighter. You know, when I set up my shots, I want to make sure I'm in the right range when she's, she, um, attack. So she's a very good counter fighter. Every time that I do something, I got to expect she's going to show something. So I got to be ready for. She's, she's dangerous. She proved, you know, she knocked a couple girls out. She having knockout power. I got to watch for that. So as well, I am too. So I'm pretty sure if I connect, I can drop her as well. Thank you, Amanda. And you, Thank for you. you, Irene, what's the most challenging aspect of Amanda's game? How do you have to fight to get the job done? Well, Amanda is dangerous in every area, so you're facing the goat here. So, I mean, I, I gotta do everything well, everything, try to do everything perfect, just going after it and stay focused.
just keep on the game plan and that's it. Enjoy the moment. Thank you. All right, I think that's going to do it. I just want to say in closing, how about some respect for these two athletes in their second language, no less. No interpreter needed today, by the way. Irene Aldana and Amanda Nunes, June 10th, live on pay-per-view UFC 289. Handsome Mick Maynard's backstage. He's going to come up and uh, stare these athletes down. Thank you all for coming out. Don't forget, way in top of the hour right here in Newark.